What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus package update, daily news, pretty much everything going on here in our country, in Washington, D.C., money, investing, the stock market, everything you need to know about on a daily basis. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so, so you don't miss out on new videos that come out here on our channel every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us down below. The first new confirmed case of the new virus variant Omicron is now here in the United States. Well, we knew it was going to happen, and it is now confirmed to be here. As some of you may have heard, the, the California and San Francisco Departments of Public Health and the CDC have confirmed that a recent case of COVID-19 among an individual in California was caused by the Omicron variant. Genomic sequencing was conducted at the University of California at San Francisco, and the sequence was confirmed at the CDC as being consistent with the Omicron variant. So I know there are a lot of questions, but here's what we know right now. The individual was a traveler who returned from South Africa on November the 22nd and tested positive on November the 29th. The individual is self-quarantining and all close contacts have been contacted and all close contacts thus far have tested negative. The individual was fully vaccinated and experience mild symptoms which are improving at this point. So this is the first confirmed case of COVID-19 caused by the Omicron variant detected in the United States. And as all of you know, because we've been discussing this, this, we knew that it was just a matter of time before the first case of Omicron would be detected in the United States. And as you know, we know, I've been saying it, and my colleagues on the medical team and others have been saying it, we know what we need to do to protect people. Get vaccinated if you're not already vaccinated. Get boosted if you've been vaccinated for more than six months with an mRNA or two months with J&J. &J. And all the other things we've been talking about, about getting your children vaccinated, masking in indoor congregate settings, et cetera. I'm going to call on people. Go ahead, Dick. Thanks, Dr. Um, at this point, uh, should Americans be changing anything they do in their day-to-day -day lives? Are you changing what you do as the president no. changing what he does? No, that's, that's a, a good question and an obvious question. But if you look at the things that we have been recommending, they're just the same. I and mean, we want to keep doing that and make sure we pay close attention to that. And are there other cases that the CDC is investigating as potential uh, Omicron variants in the U.S. right now? To my knowledge, at this point, no. Eric, what should we take away from the fact that this person's symptoms uh, appear to be mild at this point, and have all the other travelers on the plane also been contacted? Well, this is what we call in medicine an N equals 1, which means that you really can't take anything away from a single patient. It is very it's, — it's, we feel good that this patient not only had mild symptoms, but actually the symptoms appear to be improving. But as we've said, there's a lot of information that is now evolving out of countries like South Africa that have a much larger number of individuals, not only who are confirmed, but individuals who are probables, which means they are going to have a lot of experience which we will benefit from here as the weeks go by. Some of you heard me say that in a matter of two weeks or two and a half, three weeks, we'll know a lot about transmissibility, about whether or not it uh, essentially eludes some of the protection from things like monoclonal antibodies, whether or not the disease itself in general is going to be severe, and what is the difference in an individual who's been vaccinated versus unvaccinated, boosted versus not boosted. We're going to get that information. So again, I appreciate your question about one one individual, but we're going to get in. We're going to get a lot more information. Caitlin. Thanks, Dr. Fauci. Two questions for you. One, you said this person had been fully vaccinated. Had they had a booster shot yet? To my knowledge, no, Caitlin. Okay. Yeah. And under consideration, the CDC is considering having stricter testing requirements to get into the United States, a 24-hour window before taking off, but also is considering having a period of retesting once you get back to the United States. Would that have helped in this case if that was already in place? You know, I'm not so sure because this person, I mean, did what we hope other people would do. They got off, and as soon as they became symptomatic, they went and got tested, and it was positive. And so when do you think those new requirements when it comes to travel 
be implemented given clearly this is something that is already affecting the United States. Well, th that's obvious all things that are being considered and under discussion, Caitlin. I don't think I can make any real statement about what, when and if that's going to happen. Yeah, so let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Are you concerned about this new virus variant? Um, we have at least one new case confirmed here in the United States. They did come from South Africa. Just one case, but honestly, this is just the start of it. This is how the Delta confirmed. Um, the Delta variant um, came to the U.S., and that has uh, overwhelmingly been now the uh, the main strain here in the U.S. So um, we'll have to see what will happen here. Both Moderna and um, Pfizer have uh, kind of announced that they're looking into it and that they may um, tweak their vaccines if they need to. So they're looking into it. They didn't need to do it for the Delta virus, the, the, the Delta variant, but they said they may need to tweak their vaccines for this new Omicron variant. And if they need to, they will do it. And it could take up to 100 days to do that. I'll keep you up to date here. Uh, meanwhile, this sent the stock market and the markets panicking as well yesterday. Um, the Dow actually fell more than 400 points yesterday, but it was actually a lot more than that. It was actually around 1,000 points. As you can see here yesterday, the market was actually up around 600 points. We were just around, you can see here, almost 35,000. We were at 34,994. So just shy of 35,000 points, 34,994. And as you can see here, we ended at just barely over 34,000. So we dropped from the high yesterday of almost 35,000 to all the way down to almost 34,000. So intraday, we dropped almost 1,000 points yesterday. We ended down 461 points but again, we were up almost 600 for the day, 500 and some points for the day. So the stock market completely panicked uh, on the news of this uh, in the middle of the day. And we ended up down um, in total from the whole drop, almost a thousand points when you add all that up. So yeah, very, very big news here. And I mean, I have, of course, a lot of people are concerned about this here. You know, yeah, I mean, it just feels like uh, this is the never ending story. <laughs> uh, let me know if you've seen that movie as a, as a kid. I did for sure or a long time ago. The other thing we're working on here is uh, or they're trying to work on along with the stimulus package is the government shutdown, which is now 48 hours away from having a government shutdown, which is on Friday. And uh, the House did not take it up here yesterday. Remember, the House and the Senate have to do it, and the Senate is the harder thing to pass. The Democrats can pass it in the House on their own, but the House didn't even take it up. Yeah, the House didn't even take it up. And the Democrats and the, the Republicans are going to have to an agree, come to an agreement in the Senate. They're trying to avoid a government shutdown here on Friday. But honestly, I don't know. I think we're growing closer and closer to having a government shutdown on Friday. It's hard to tell because it, it's it's a coin flip at this point. They could get it done. They could not get it done. Um, but we're having a lot of uh, Republican opposition here at this point. Um, the Democrats can pass it in the House, but the House is inconsequential. It's the Senate where everything is going to matter, where they're going to need 60 votes to pass it. And while there's only 50 Democrats, they're going to need 10 Republicans. And it's basically probably going to be all or nothing. They're, well, not necessarily all the Republicans, but they're either going to get 10 votes or not. And well... Uh, we could see a government shutdown here on Friday. Of course, we're also working on the stimulus package and the debt limit. The debt limit is also growing closer and closer and closer. We're down now down to 
well, less than two weeks here. Uh, December 15th is the estimated date where the country, the Treasury Department, and the U.S. government will literally run out of money that could delay Social Security checks, child tax credit payments. Between the two of those is like 130 million people that de depend on Social Security payments and child tax credit payments combined. And, well, if our country goes into default, those payments are probably or going to be delayed, along with the full faith and credit of the United States government. And, well, it's looking more and more likely that uh, Democrats and Republicans are going to have to come to an agreement on that as well, because the Democrats could pass the stimulus package and include the debt limit in the Senate. But again, as the days keep rolling by, it looks more and more likely that they're going to have to do it with bipartisanship, meaning Republicans and Democrats will have to come to an agreement together. So <laughs> now remember that um, a government shutdown would be more likely to get a deal done. A debt limit would be a harder thing, in my opinion, to get a deal done with. Um, the Republicans seem much more unhappy about raising the debt limit, even though they raised it three times underneath former President Donald Trump in four years, and they know they have to raise the debt limit uh, just to pay the interest on all the past debt that we've accumulated for the past like 200 years. Uh, we have to do that just to pay the interest on. We have like $28, 29000000000000 trillion here, and um, former President Donald Trump put like $8 trillion of that uh, onto the national debt. That's like 25% of the national debt he added in just like four years. Nonetheless, Republicans are just holding a stance. They say they don't want to help the Democrats raise the national debt. It's this whole big thing, right? And, um, you know, Democrats are saying, but Trump added more to the national debt in four years than any other president did in four years. and you know, it's this, it's this whole big thing. But nonetheless, if they don't come to an agreement, our economy is going to literally just collapse. <laughs> Meanwhile, Democrats are trying to pass the next stimulus package to provide all these uh, social benefits here, um, lowering the cost of prescription drug pricing, providing uh, literally checks to 65 million children called the child tax credits. Uh, $250 to $300 per month to uh, literally uh, children under the age of 17 um, and to extend that for one more year. By the way, that last payment is going to go out on December 15th, which is the date of the um, debt limit. That's going to be interesting there. So whether that will be delayed or not is interesting because that's the exact date of the deadline. So that could be interesting as well. Also, that's the last payment of the child tax credits. So if they don't pass the stimulus package somewhere close to there or somewhere close after that, that'll be the last payment. There won't be another monthly payment after that if they don't pass the stimulus package. And those monthly checks going out to 65 million families, 65 million children, there won't be another one. There will be the... Um, the first six months of that will be paid uh, in the 2021 tax returns, which you will file next year. Because uh, remember, the first six months, January through June, didn't go out in monthly payments. They didn't start the monthly payments until July. So when you file your 2021 tax returns, you're going to get six months, which is basically $1,500 to $1,800 um, when you file your 2021 tax returns. So keep that in mind. Also, just so... Uh, in case you haven't heard this or you don't forget or you had know anybody that had a new baby, if you had a new baby, uh, make sure you file a tax return and claim the new baby for 2021. And on line 30, claim the stimulus check for them, $1,400, and the child tax credits for them for the whole year. You can get $5,000 for them no matter when they were born in this year. As long as they're born in this year, you can get the full... $3,600 child tax credits for them 
and the $1,400 stimulus check for them this year. Of course, this isn't really tax advice because I don't know your exact situation. Talk to your accountant or who, your tax preparer or anybody who does your taxes because they'll know your exact tax situation. Uh, but just keep that in mind. Also, we have, um, check this out. Nearly 3 million people are pushing for another stimulus check for adults with the change.org petition. In fact, there's multiple different petitions. Um, just three uh, or nearly 3 million people with just the one petition alone from change.org, which is for $2,000 per month to every American, is at 2.973 signatures. I'll scroll down here because I know I'm in the corner here a little bit. Uh, almost at 3 million signatures here. Yeah, so this is nearing uh, almost 3 million signatures just on this one uh, petition alone here. There's also the petition from the Senior Citizens League as well. Um, so there's a lot of people that are pressuring Congress to do a fourth stimulus check um, to for, for uh, adults as well. Um, as they uh, have this bill in the Senate and are going to drastically change this bill here. So definitely make sure you're calling, emailing, tweeting your senators and let them know what you want to have in this bill. They're your elected officials. So let them know because, I mean, honestly, we have millions of people that are requesting a stimulus check to be added into this stimulus package for adults in addition to the checks that are in there for the children, the child tax credits. I mean, literally millions of people. And now that we have this new virus variant here in the United States, who knows what's going to happen with it going forward. We have travel restrictions here. Um, the U.S. has already um, shut down travel from several different countries here in uh, going to or coming from South Africa. And who knows what's going to happen here going forward. We have several different countries in Europe that have literally gone into lockdown. Um, the Australia has just come off a 242-day lockdown. And we're literally dealing with a brand new virus variant. So, and honestly, cases are not doing good here in the United States. We're at right now, uh, you can see here on our screen here, uh, November 30th, we had 109,294 cases uh, in the United States, positive cases that were reported here. This is according to Google. The seven-day average, 82,000 here. Uh, just a few days ago, we had 119,000 on November 24th. Uh, we had a high here, November 22nd, 158,000 cases. I mean, cases are still really, really high here, honestly. Uh, yeah, 109,000 new cases just yesterday. And when we look at deaths, 1,555 just yesterday alone. And on November 29th, 1,876. I mean, this is still on a daily basis. I mean, this is still a lot. And when you combine that with the economic worries, I mean, look at the stock market. We had a thousand point drop um, just yesterday from the intraday highs. We ended up down 450 points on Black Friday. We ended up down 900, over 900 points in the Dow. Two days alone, that's almost 2,000 points on those two days. I mean, literally, it's, it's affecting the economy on a daily basis, and not just the stock market. I mean, this literally affects average everyday people. There's a lot of people that don't want to go to work. There's a lot of people that um, don't want to work in certain circumstances. There's a lot of people that don't want to go to the store. Um, there's a lot of people that are just literally, that this affects their average everyday lives. People literally catch the virus. I mean, this is literally affecting our country on a day-to-day -day basis, affecting people's lives. So... You let me know your thoughts, but also let your let your senators know your thoughts as well. I mean, if this is affecting your lives, if this is affecting, if I mean, let them know what you want to have the, in this next stimulus package. They've also confirmed there's going to be another stimulus package after this, and I'll let you know what's going on in our country, as well as state stimulus checks, state stimulus packages, city, county, as well as social security raises and uh, rent assistance, mortgage assistance and uh, utility assistance. So make sure to subscribe down below. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
subscribing is completely free to do so. Join our family of subscribers and help us reach 400,000. We're getting pretty close here. You can click here to watch my newest video next. You can click this top video here to how to apply for rent assistance. It's free to do so, and you can get 12 months of your rent paid for by the third stimulus package. Uh, there's literally uh, billions of dollars available. And this bottom video is how to get utility assistance. You can get a $500 to $1,500 uh, paid for, for utility assistance. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.